Hello everyone, in this session we'll discuss about input output instructions but before discussing those we need to discuss how input output works. Suppose we are having an input device that is keyboard. Now when we press any of the key from the keyboard the corresponding code is transmitted through transmitter interface to the INPR register. Now we know that INPR register stores the data coming from input devices. So INPR register will store the data from the keyboard. But the condition to store this data onto the INPR register will be decided based on the flag. That flag is termed as FGI. It is a flip flop. Now FGI is meant for flag input. So based on that we are knowing that as per the common bus system the content of INPR can only be shifted to accumulator. So based on this flag the content would be transferred to accumulator. This accumulator can transfer the data to out R. Now why out R? Out R is meant for transferring the content to the output device. So from AC that is accumulator the data is transferred to out R. Then Again, for managing this outputting of the data, we require one flag that is FGO. It is a flip-flop. So flag output. Similarly, like flag input, we are having flag output. So based on its value, the content would be output onto some output device. So through receiver interface, it will transfer the data to the output device in case, say for example, printer. So let's see how it works. So we have divided this, this block diagram into three parts. This is input output terminal. Then this is serial communication interface because we know that the input output device can be communicated with the processor by means of some serial communication interface. And the third part is computer registers and flip flops. So let's see how it works. Initially FGI is zero. That means the flag input is zero. So from keyboard, the input is transmitted to the transmitter interface and it is transferred to INPR register. This INPR register is holding some data. That is the data coming from the keyboard. But still it is not transferred to the accumulator. Now this data which is stored in INPR register can only be transferred to accumulator when this flag FGI is 1. So now consider that FGI is set to 1 then INPR can send its data to AC. And till that time no input from keyboard is allowed to enter to INPR. So once again, if FGI becomes zero, then it is allowed to send the data from keyboard to INPR. That means there would be a queue maintained into the transmitter interface. So once FGI becomes one, the content is shifted from INPR to AC and again is set to zero to receive the next input. Now similarly, the output will also work in the same fashion. Let's see how. So from accumulator, we want to transmit the data to printer. So how it works? So initially FGO is set to one. Now over here, you need to remember that when input is getting carried out, FGI is set to zero. But when we want to transfer the data to output device, FGO is set to one. So when FGO is one, the content of AC is transferred to out R register. But Still, we cannot transfer the data to printer because for sending the data to printer, FGO is set to zero. So now we are changing FGO to zero and based on that, the out R register will send its data to receiver interface and through receiver interface, it will send its data to printer. So as you can observe over here, when the data came out from out R register and when it gets transferred to receiver interface, during that time FGO was zero. Let me repeat that part again. Initially, right now it is one. So content of AC is transferred to out R. But now it is made zero. That means the content from out R can be shifted to receiver interface and it is and the FGO is set to 1 again. 
that means what it means that now outer register is ready to take another output from accumulator so by that time receiver interface will transfer it data to the output device so this is how the input output system of a basic computer works let us have a brief again from keyboard it the input is transferred to transmitter interface wherein some queue would be maintained and it would be transferred to INPR register. Now INPR register will hold the data until FGI is set to 1. So once FGI becomes 1, the content would be shifted to accumulator. And again it would be made 0 to receive the second input. But let us see the output operation. From AC, the content is transferred to outer when it is 1. When FGO is 1. So, when FGO is 1, the content from accumulator it is transferred to outer. But when FGO becomes 0, the content of out R is transferred back, transferred to receiver interface and again FGO is set to 1 to receive the another data from the accumulator. And by that time, the receiver interface will maintain Q and it, it will transfer the data to the output device. So this is how input output system of a basic computer works. Now let's see which are the instructions which affects the this particular arrangement or based on which the input output system works. So before discussing the instruction, let us have the general format of the instruction which we have studied and based on the decoding of this instruction, we know that at time D7, i t3 this will decide that it is input output instruction because for input output instruction d7 should be 1 i bit that is 15th bit of instruction register should be 1 and at time t3 the instruction would be executed so d7 i t3 and the operation which is going to be executed would be decided on the bit number so we are having bit 0 to bit 11 so it will decide that which instruction is going to get executed we are having six input output instruction which we already discussed in brief in the types of instruction so the first instruction what we are having is INP means input a character to AC which occurs at time PB 11 and what happens the content of INPR register is transferred to the accumulator 0 to 7 bits why 0 to 7 because INPR register is of 8 bits only and these 8 bits are to be shifted to accumulator 0 to 7 bits because accumulator is of 16 bits so the lower 8 bits of accumulator will store the content of INPR when we are having input instruction but along with that, we are knowing that as per the block diagram which we discussed earlier, FGI is set to 0 to receive the another inputs. So along with that, FGI is set to 0. So this is input instruction. So input a character to accumulator through INPR register. Next instruction what we are having is out which occurs at PB10. So at PB10, the content of accumulator 0 to 7 bits, lower half bits. So 0 to 7 bits are transferred to outer register. So what happens over here? Along with that, when the content of accumulator is transferred to outer, along with that, FGO is set to 0 to again receive some another inputs. So FGO is set to 0, so that is an output character. Now what we are having next instruction is SKI, that is skipped on input flag which will occur at PB9 that means skip next instruction on input flag so if FGI is 1 input flag if FGI is 1 then skip the next instruction by incrementing the program counter similarly we are having SKO that means it will occur at PB8 and the condition for it is if FGO is 1 then skip next instruction so skip on output flag the next instruction what we are having is ION which occurs at PB7. Now ION it stands for interrupt enable on. So it will occur at PB7 and the corresponding command executed is IEN is set to 1. That means it is a flag IEN interrupt enable is a flag which is set to 1 on ION instruction. So interrupt enable on. 
in the last instruction what we are having is IOF that means it will occur at PB6 and we are setting IEN flag to be 0 so IEN interrupt enable off so these are the input output instructions but the question you must have arised is IEN what is IEN it is a flag IEN interrupt enable flag which is set and reset it is set at ION instruction and it is reset at IOF instruction we'll see to these two flags in detail in the next part that is interrupt cycle